Hi there, I'm Casper, and today we'll take a look at DreamChip camera connectivity options from the Skahoi ecosystem. We have a SSM 500 here. It has a WebSocket connection. We just use that for reference. We can also connect serially to it. We have a, an Atom 1 4K, an Atom 1 Mini Zoom, and just an Atom 1 here. So these four cameras are on the table in front of us. There is an XC8 over here, which is a replay controller, um, which is great with the SSM 500. And next to it, we have RCP Pro. And then we have two blue pills, uh, blue pill one, blue pill two. And the first setup we'll take a look at is USB connectivity. So these cables, uh, I don't know if they come by default by deliveries from DreamChip, but anyway, they have, uh, these are RS485 to USB converters. Uh, I think standard issue stuff. You can plug them into your blue pills or the XC8 also has a USB-A plug you can use it with. Uh, the X, um, RCP Pro does not. Uh, so you either need one of these type of controllers from Skahoi that has a USB-A plug or you need a blue pill that has USB-A as well. These are using standard issue DreamShip cables. So they are basically um, power fed from over here standard dream chip power supplies and then the cables go straight into the cameras each one of them so it's a single cable solution into the camera very nice cables from dream chip this solution works out great and even whether you use this for usb or if you use this with a connection to a serial converter as we'll look at later in this video it really doesn't matter these are great cables and uh, a nice workflow all right so um Let's first look at the blue pills. Uh, so we have a blue pill server. This would be this guy over here. We're looking at the web interface of it. And I've really boiled this down to a minimum. We have the hardware manager, system manager, which is responsible for the UI and uh, putting stuff into the display of the device. Then we have device connector. And device connector is important because we want this device to announce availability of the DreamShip camera uh, to the world around it. Um, and then we have the core dream chip, which is the actual piece of software that will talk to the, let me see, which one is it? It is the dream chip at some one mini zoom. Okay. So let's just go in here. And um, in this UI, there's a, a, a lock here from some previous test I did, but let's just add a device. We will make it active. We'll set a device ID. In this case, we, we need to make sure device IDs are unique across the whole setup. So for this one, I'll call it device ID 2. And the model ID, I know it's 5. And I'm sorry, guys, but that would be difficult for you to know. Well, actually, uh, it may not be because uh, you could go to devicesgahoy.com and if you search up add some one mini zoom and you look inside the supported parameter list, actually, this little number here is the model ID. Um, but there is a better and easier way to do this, which I'll show you in a moment. But anyway, I'll just type this in. And the connection method is going to be USB serial. And that's all you've got to set. Um, if you had multiple USB devices on the bus, you would also have to work with bus ID, which is explained here in the text. No, it is not. It is right. This is the port. Anyway, all you need to do is to do this, save, and then look in the lock. It says you're connecting device ID 2 with local USB serial FTDI converter. That's the cable. And it is connecting to this one and it looks like it's all good. So this is good news. And um, over here on the XC8, we uh, could basically set this up now. So um, let's, let's um, set this one up. Uh, actually, the first thing I want to do is to add my RCP Pro. So I'll just do that. Uh, now the RCP Pro is basically managed by the XC8, but uh, that, that's a good thing. It's, um, it means that these two devices collectively share a single connection to the cameras. That's pretty clever. And uh, then we need to add a device. And the device we want to add is an Atom 1 Mini Zoom. So we know that. And uh, doing that, um, we will set the device ID to two because this is the coordination we need to do. We need to know that device ID is two over on, uh, I can also start with one, but um, nah, device ID two. This is, this is how it, it gets connected, those two things. Actually, all I need to do is this. Um, in this case, this is a special case, okay? So I'm starting out with the special case and 
that that is I'm going up here and then I'm typing in the IP address of my blue pill over here. So I'm basically copying this over into this one because the core I want to connect to is no HTTP. Okay, that camera I want to connect to is on this blue pill having that IP address. So I'm now talking to a dream chip camera on that one. So we started with a complex scenario. Sorry about that. But I'm connected to it and um, it is over here on my devices list. So now I need to assign that device to my RCP if I want to use it over here. So now you can see the RCP is instantly connected to, um, let me go to the simulator so you can see, uh, go to the RCP Pro. All right. So um, in the simulator, I can, I can simulate all these things. So you can see that I'm able to basically do that. Uh, auto exposure correction and now I'm just changing the um, the exposure speed a little bit here on the dial so you can see that follows along okay so I'm connected to the Atom 1 mini zoom camera in this way now let's go back and then add another device now in this case uh, let's set up the local devices right we have the XCA here and it is actually connected to a SSM 500 so if we search that one up we can select it and uh, I want to make that device ID one for one reason. I want to show you in a moment. And then I'll just choose WebSocket. All right. So WebSocket is fine. The camera IP address will have to be known to me, which it is. This is the camera ID address, and that's all I need to do. There's generally no need to specify a port because it is port 9001, but this is automatically detected if we are using WebSocket for SSM 500 then. So it's going to connect straight up to the camera. And now you can actually see uh, it is already running in the display here. You, you see that if we go over to the simulator so you can follow along on the screen. So... Um, and now I'm, I'm using the T-bar so I can actually change the, the replay speed of, uh, of the device. I can uh, change between playback of the two buffers here. I can also shuttle uh, forth and back so, and uh, jog with the um, um, jog encoder. I can go to the in point, to the out point. I can go a little bit forward here. No, wait. Go to the in point, go a little bit forward. I can set an in point. It is registered in the display. Uh, then I can shuttle forward and then fine tune a little bit, set an out point, and now I can go to the end point and then I can play it back. Okay, so that is the XCI 8. And if I wanted to add RCP control for that, I would just open this one up and see the camera that I find locally, the SSM 500, I'll just add it in here. So I uh, have device ID number one and number two. I wonder why that disappeared. Okay, just reload UI. So over here, change over to the uh, the other camera. This would be my SM1 SSM500. See it in the simulator. There we go. Um, yeah, so once again, let's just turn uh, auto exposure cor correction uh, on and off. Uh, if I have it enabled or disabled, I can change the exposure time if I want. Okay, that's great. So um, let's go back to home because I also do have something connected here on the USB uh, plug. So let's just uh, actually let's unplug it and see how that works. It is the Atom 1 camera. All right. So search up Atom 1. Find it right here. There's no auto discover here. Uh, device ID 3 is fine in this case. Add some one connectivity method. We'll use USB serial. And with that, save. And it is probably going to miss IP. So if we go over to packages and we look at the DreamChip package, you see that it is it is trying to find something for USB serial. Uh, not so much luck. Let's uh, plug this one in. Uh, there we go. And uh, we should see some luck now uh, in this case. Yeah. All right. So that is uh, fine. Um, what what we notice here is that it actually finds it here. The connection is OK and so on. So we should be able to go back to the home and then see Atom 1 is added. If I want to add it up here as well, I would also have to select it to add it to the RCP. You may <laughs> now this one is a no match. Why is that? OK, so um, Atom 1 uh, here. Um, so basically now I can change between the SSM 500, the Atom 1, and also the Atom 1 Mini Zoom uh, in between these two. And um, um, I can enable and disable again the auto uh, exposure correction for that camera. 
there is still this one, so let's add that. And now I um, I need to show you a trick. I think everybody in Skahoy hates this a little bit as well because you need to do something special to add a camera. And, and I might not even have found the right method. There might be a clever way, more clever way than this one. But <clears throat> let's just do something like remove local and set some weird thing here for a moment. Because then as I'm adding a device, I now create like a new uh, section. I need the Atom 1, let me see. Okay, that's the Atom 1 4K. So it's also an Atom 1 that we need to add. Atom 1, just select it. And uh, yeah, device ID 4 is fine. Um, they have to be unique, remember that. And I will pick uh, nothing basically as my connectivity method because this comes automatically. This is the reason why I don't need to specify it here and down here. But in these cases, I need to go over to my blue pill here and then set it up first. Uh, in this case, I have Reactor running and that is going to be helpful because uh, with Reactor, even though we are not going to use Reactor on that blue pill for anything, it is just a wonderful device manager. So Atom 1, bring it up here, select and use the USB serial connection. And that's all we need to do. Yeah, we need to set the device ID to four. It has to be synchronized, otherwise it won't uh, pick it up. We can set it to 44 so that you can see that it won't. But um, so it's it's connected to, uh, to, to the device uh, straight up here. So that's super cool. Um, that's really great. So if I go to, yeah. Okay, let's just set the device ID to four. So we have like a chance to see that this would work. Okay, so device ID four is set here. Go back to the XC8 down here. Then I will type in the IP address of my blue pill. And that was not the IP address. That is the IP address, good. All right, so it's now going to see if it can connect to it. It will say core disconnected for a um, for a reason, which is that we did not make sure the device connector is there. We need this little piece of software. We had it over here on the first blue pill, packages, uh, device connector, and uh, oop, 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 sorry about that. Uh, going back here, let's search device connector. Having it right there, we need to start this one, all right? So the moment we started this one, going back here, you see it's connected now because basically what device connector does is to let the blue pill here share the access to its device course. So these two blue pills, all they do is to basically talk to a dream chip camera and convert that into IP connectivity using the uh, protobuffer gRPC based protocol for device calls that makes the XC8 able to talk to them and uh, basically control the cameras uh, through the network in this clever way. So back here, you see this one is connected, this one up here is connected, and now I will go back and correct this one to be called local again, so that we also get access to the local core. So this little trick with the local that I just did was really to make sure that Reactor would allow me to create these three sections, one for each camera. And now that I've done that, my second Atom 1, let's call it Atom 1 2, set up here, uh, can now be added in this box. Ah, now I added it twice. Sorry about that. Reload to get that one up. Yes, um, should be fine. Let's let's try it out. So we go over here. We see, can we enable, disable, enable, disable? Perfect. All right, so that just works out. A, a few notes here. For those um, remote device calls, the IDs need to match, all right? Let's see what happens if we mismatch the IDs. So in this case, we could go here and change this to five. And the moment we change it to five, it's now not connected anymore. I'm not sure if there's easy ways to see that this is the issue, but make sure that your device IDs are synced up. Make sure as well. Uh, probably the type should be synced up as well, actually. So whatever type you choose from the model ID here should be the same on on the um, blue pill over here. There has to be some synchronicity and this is not super intelligent at the moment uh, in the way we're doing these things. So you need to keep your um, mind clear on making sure this, this works out. For these, um, you definitely need to select um, the model ID as well, but also connectivity method and IP. And 
that was true for this one. It is also true for this one. So connectivity method, nothing else needs to be specified here. For these, basically you don't need to specify anything because all it needs is connection to over this to this one and all the connectivity method information is on the blue pill. So this is why you say it's a USB serial device. Yes, and it is the device ID that drives this connection. In the second section of the video, we will uh, rearrange a little bit. So instead of using a WebSocket connection to the SSM500, we're going to use a USB serial connection. And we are also introducing a bunch of IP serial converters. So let me show you what we have in front of us here. This is um, the WaveShare RS232485 to Ethernet converter. This is like the favorite at the moment. Uh, one that we have uh, extensively tested and tried. This is connected to Ethernet, has power, uh, 12 volt power coming into it. It's actually delivered with a 5 volt power supply, but we use a 12 volt. That allows us to use like a single high rosy connector cable down into this one, splitting it out into this screw terminal for A plus and B minus. That is the RS485 connection. And then uh, we have power coming out of this jack over here. So it becomes a single cable solution, which is like what DreamChip sends out by default. But here you have it like coming from this converter altogether. There might be other options, including PoE and other things, which we might document on the wiki. This one is also really cool. So this is an RS485 to Ethernet. So just that on this connector. They have swapped the outer terminals on this connector. Great job, Chinese guys. So we have uh, protective earth here and it is pin three over here. It's pin one here. B minus is still in the middle. Just beware. Um, this one has a little cable. I think I got this one from DreamChip, but this is an XLR mini uh, mail that fits the DreamChip cables. Very, very convenient. Now, in this case, we still get the power from the regular DreamChip power supply. So this is probably the official way of doing things. Power to the camera. RS485 into this converter, Ethernet out, 5 volt power to power the converter. Over here we have a um, USR TCP 232306. That is also a 485 converter. Same thing, power coming out here, RS485 coming out here, power in here, 12 volt Ethernet there. This is the model we have recommended for many years. It works just as well as this one. We kind of like this, it feels more modern. Coming out of the same company, they are. I mean, the web UI looks the same, but this is like a more modern version. A little bit confusing, but they all work. So they have IP addresses, they have ports, and we will connect to them inside Reactor. Okay, first thing we want to do is to actually mess up the connection to the SSM 500. So let's remove that cable. And we can see the SSM1, ah, SSM1, SSM500 is unconnected. So nothing is connected right now. Let's see what we can do about this. Uh, first, the Atom1 mini zoom is connected to this guy on, um, so, and it's ID number two. I think the safest is probably, oh, uh, maybe I can change it to local. Who knows? Maybe it will work. Ah. No, yeah, we can't. All right, so I better delete this device, all right? And then I add it. If I add it, then by default, it's gonna be added to my local devices. So, mini zoom. Okay, and this was the device, was it number two? If I remember correctly. And the connectivity method is gonna be TCP serial, which is also the default. You can read about that here. It means we need to type in this IP address of the converter and the port, which is 5000. And it's already the default, so I just need to save and we'll see this is connecting. Okay, so that is great. So that was number two. Then we have the Atom 1 that is connected to this guy. Okay, and I will quickly do that. Set it up TCP serial. I know the IP address of the converter is this. And on that one, I actually kept the default port of the converter, which is 26. So you need to set that. And that is connected now. Then the SSM 500, that is connected over USB. So I need to connect that to the backside of my XC8. And that is done. I need to then change over to USB serial. And I can skip the IP address. This should all be fine. 
Notice that I'm keeping the IDs. All right. So as 500 is in place, you can see the 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 playback counter is actually running in the uh, simulator. So or in the display here. So it's um it's um it's playing back currently, um, and we can control that with the T bar, of course, and we can also shuttle and all those things. Super nice. All right. The, then let's go back to the homepage and then take the the final one once again. Uh, SM1 number two device ID four. Let's delete the device and then add it afresh here. Add some one. Just select and it's device ID number four. Yes, great. Connectivity method would be oh TCP serial and the IP address is this one. Port is five thousand. I know that, and I will set it and it is going to be connected right there. Over on the RCP, we see all cameras available uh, on the selector here. And uh, that's that's just great um, because I kept all the IDs. It is going to be also synchronized here. So uh, things we have done to test the rigidity of this is to disconnect power of cameras of converters, disconnect um, uh, IS um, the um, uh, serial connection. So okay, let's do that a few times. I'll just disconnect serial connections here. This is to test that things are coming back online. All right. So we should see that some things got disconnected in the UI. And let's just plug it back in. Pull this one out for USB. Put that back in on the USB. And uh, we should see that things are reconnecting correctly. All right, that's super cool. Let's also do the same for Ethernet. So let's just plug the Ethernet cables out and then plug them in again into the devices like that, all right? And we should see that they are all recreating their connectivity. Now let's do the same for the power to the converters. So all converters are unpowered and we plug them all back in. Come back here. Yes, thank you. And there we go. Now, some of these cameras might take a little bit of time. This one has a long um, cycle of getting reinitialized because it needs to calibrate the lens on it. There's lens gears on this one. So that's going to take a little bit of time before it's ready for us. But you see that things are reconnecting like this. Okay, guys, um, what else do we have of options in terms of connectivity? So to just wrap this one up, TCP serial is, TCP serial is our favorite. Using the serial converters from WaveShare and other third-party converters, really easy workflow. WebSocket is for SSM 500. WebSocket serial is one I have not mentioned here, but some of these converters are able to use a WebSocket connection instead of TCP. I don't see a big point because they we work with TCP already, so WebSocket is just another way to talk to the converter, and it's not found in every converter, so it's, it's not very useful at the moment. UART is a feature of the blue pills, where the built-in UART of the blue pills coming out of the expansion port could be used. Currently also a fancy option, which is not available commercially to anyone. But USB serial is probably the one that you would look into because you can use the standard issue dream chip cables, plug them into the USB port and control your cameras directly in this way. IP address is the IP address of whatever you connect to. Port is typically the port of the IP device you're talking to, except if it is USB serial. Then there's one thing I did not mention, and that is, I think potentially you can use a USB hub to connect USB devices. But if you do so, then the order of the devices coming into the unit might be messed up. So let's say you plug them in in a certain order, you turn the USB hub on, then you are not necessarily sure that the cameras will appear in with the same numbering as they did last time. So I would say one USB device per one US camera per Skyway device you use, but you may be successful doing the other thing. It's just experimental knowledge that I'm sharing with you. Buzz ID. That one would be um, the last thing that we want to cover, and that is what happens if you have multiple DreamChip cameras on the same bus. And in that case, you need to set bus IDs of the cameras. Let's look at how multiple cameras can be served by the same serial converter. This is based on DreamChip's um, addressing on the RS485 bus. It gets technical now, sorry about it. And usually you would use Pro Video GUI from DreamChip to set this using a Windows computer connected with USB, set the ID. 
In most cases, you just keep the ID at one, and that's what we have assumed all along. And you see in this box, it really says the default is one for serial devices, zero for, for WebSocket connections. Uh, with a WebSocket connection to the DreamChip SSM500, you don't need an ID. Actually, it's, it's basically stripped out of the command protocol, but uh, for everything else you do. So uh, what I will do now is if, if we look at the table here, we see the um, this converter has been set up with two cables. So it's serving this camera and this camera. One is unconnected at the moment, and that is for good reason, because I need to change the address of this one first, okay? So basically I am um, connecting using Netcat NC on my Mac here. We, you can use um, PuTTY on Windows and um, a PuTTY and um, on Linux Telnet. Uh, so basically, yeah, you make a TCP connection. It is 43, port 5000, all right. So um, yeah, now you see our um, um, XC8 is already talking to it, great. So actually you're listening in on the traffic coming from the, uh, from the XC8 over to the camera. So if we wanted to have a little bit of uh, fun here, like if we, no wait, I'm not sure that we, no, no, let's, let's, let's just keep it as it is. Uh, I should maybe just quickly um, stop this because otherwise we won't be able to, you see it's the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. It is assuming it's talking to, okay, let's just click this deactivate it like that all right okay so it, it stopped talking now what we can do and that's a command that you will identify you find that in the dream chip manual if you do that you're basically asking out on the bus which cameras are there it's an atom 14k mini 16 and it has address number one now i want to change this address so i think from the manual from dream chip there's this command is485 address and then i need to specify the address so first i want to I start need to address it by one first, then I paste in this, and then I change the address to two. And it says okay. So now I've changed the address of camera number one on this bus to number two, and then I need to save settings. That's also a command. I'm pretty sure. Save settings. Let's just check. Okay, so you can send save settings, and uh, maybe we can do a reboot like this. Oh, I'll just unpower the camera. All right, let's do it. Okay. So uh, while doing that, yeah, actually I kind of want to see the camera come up again in, in this way. So I might write 100 identify out on the bus here, but it's going to take just a while for it to, uh, to come up again. Um, in the meantime, let me plug in the Atom 1 Dream chip mini SM1 mini zoom. So that's on the bus. Uh, I'll try identify. You see, the SM1 mini zoom is actually feeding back its ID, which is that that was ID number one, of course. The question is what the other one does. And now, yeah, we get into trouble because it has apparently it is, yeah. Now there is a race condition. Both cameras are trying to respond back immediately and it gets all muddy. So this is bad. I did not manage to somehow save the settings in the in the camera over there. So that was, I need to disconnect this one. I need to try again. So RS485 address two, and it says, okay. I guess if I type in identify, it says two. So in theory, this should work. Ah, now I know what was wrong. What I need to do is of course to do save settings. Ah. What about save settings? I want to make sure that it actually saves the ID that it received. Maybe it, it just usually responds with an OK. So this is why I'm... Hmm. Okay, so now it's initializing itself again. All right, so save settings will automatically reboot the device. So that is probably good. Okay, let me just plug in the other one and then see if that works. Of course, use Pro Video GUI in Windows to set this up correctly. If you are in a situation like this, you may not have to dabble with this, but it might also be useful for you to see that with these serial converters, you have a fairly easy way to use IP tools to com communicate with the cameras. And that could be very helpful. So let's just try to identify you know, devices on the bus. And now you see both cameras are answering back, 
with a little bit of delay in time so that we correctly get this set up. Okay, so um, on the bus, let's just check. SM1 Mini Zoom is number one. SM1 4K Mini is number two. Let's go back to Reactor and set these two devices up correctly, okay? So um, this one, SM1 Mini Zoom, would be still device IP number two, TCP serial on this converter, and the change that we do, I already forgot. Okay, it is item number one on this bus, so we'll just save that. Nice, okay, so, and it should also, oh, it got disabled, so let's enable it again, real quick, and there we go. Yes, all right, so this one down here, I would then change this over to the IP address of 43, and then I type in bus ID number two for this one. So, and we'll see this one connect as well. Fingers crossed. And there we go. Two devices using the same serial converter, having different bus IDs, bus ID number one and number two on these. They are available on the RCP. Let's go to the simulator so you can see it more easily, the Atom 1 here. Um, yeah, so that is like, uh, I forget. So we have Atom 1, Atom 1, uh, let's, let's just rename that to number two because it, Atom 1, 2. Um, yeah, all right, so it's like um, the mini zoom. Actually, we can reorder them like this. So, Okay, let's check out the simulator. Uh, camera number three, Atom 1. We can enable, disable the auto exposure control. Let's disable it and change the exposure value here. All right, and then we can move to number camera number four. And we can also enable, disable this one using the serial converter and change the exposure around as we want. All right, so these things are in place. We have seen all the connectivity methods that you can have with DreamShip cameras, basically, and um, explored that. So um, hope this was useful. Make sure you visit our wiki page that has more information and will be updated with more possibilities as uh, more options and variations might come along. So um, yeah, subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media so you never miss news from Skyway.